In this video, we are going to look at some questions from Mathematics Paper 2 of 2022 for internal. Now here we are, the first question from Section A. Uh, question 1, A, given that the determinant of matrix Q is 15, find the value of B. Okay, so let's see this matrix. So the first step, if you have, you have a letter that you are asked to find the value, you first need to identify the major diagonal. So in our case, this is our our major diagonal. Then this is our minor diagonal. So now after identifying the major diagonal, let's look at the formula. So determinant is equal. To, so the we need to multiply the entities from the major diagonal, so which is 2b minus 1 times the negative 5, then minus negative 3b times 4, then we close. So since we have the determinant, so as this determinant, we put 15. Then let's expand. This negative 5 will multiply with 2b, giving us negative 10b then negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5 minus negative 3b times 4 that is 12b okay so now let's see how we can simplify so this will be negative 10b plus 5 negative times negative positive 12b so let's collect the like term so move 10 to this side 15 minus 5 is equal to 10b plus 12b. So 15 minus 5 is 10, 10, negative 10b plus 12b, that is 2b over 2, over 2b is equal to 5. Now, before we find the actual inverse of matrix Q, first let's see, make the actual matrix. So we, we have 2b minus 1. So where is the b? b we have calculated is 5 minus 1. So 2 times 5 is 10 minus 1. 10 minus 1 is 9. So here we have 9. Then 4, negative 5. Then for this one is negative 3b, which is equal to negative 3, 5 here. Negative 3 times positive 5, that is negative 15. So here we have negative uh, 15. Now, since we have now the actual elements for this matrix Q, let's proceed by finding the inverse. So the symbol for inverse is negative. Any letter raised to the power negative 1. Then the formula is 1 over determinant times its adjoint. So 1 over the uh, determinant is 15. Now we just have to find the, the matrix for adjoint. So adjoint for matrix Q. So for major diagonal, you you interchange the position. So our negative five will go on this position, then our nine will go on that position. So negative five nine. Then for the minor diagonal, you change the sign, so 15, 4. So negative 5, 4, 15, 9. So this is our final answer. Okay, so now we move on to question B. The Venn diagram shows the number of learners who took at least one of the subjects, biology, chemistry, and physics. So now, uh, Roman number one, given that the total number of learners was 170, calculate the value of x, okay? So what we are going to do is whatever that is inside the Venn diagram should be equated to 170 for us to find the value of x. So let's begin. So say x plus x plus x, since we have three x's, then we have positive 5 and 
this negative 5 here then plus 15 plus 70 plus 10 is equal to 170 so x plus x plus x is 3x then these two can cancel so 15 plus 70 85 plus 9 10 that is 95 is equal to 170 then this number we go to this side so this will be 170 minus 95 so 3x is equal to now 175 minus 170 minus 95 is sorry yes is 75 so we divide by 3 here by 3 so x c is equal to 25 so that is the value of x so what this means is here we have 25 and also here we have 25 then here this is x minus 5 which is 25 minus 5 so this is 20 okay now let's move on to question Roman number 2 how many learners took a biology and physics but not chemistry so biology and physics so we don't want any number that is in a chemistry party we only want numbers like this one this one and this one so as we can see these three numbers are in biology uh, and physics but they are not in chemistry so we'll say this is equal to 25 plus 15 plus 20 so 25 plus 15 is 40 plus 20 60 learners now let's move on to b two subjects only so if you have a condition of only so this one and this so these three numbers indicates two subjects only so it is 15 plus 5 plus 25 so 15 plus 5 is 20 plus 25 is 45 then one subject only these numbers have one subject only so this is 25 plus 10 plus 20 25 plus 10 35 plus 20 55 so this is how we can answer a question like this one now question 2a solve the equation 3x squared minus 5x minus 7 is equal to 0 giving your answers correct to two decimal places so this is a quadratic equation so we are going to use the quadratic formula so the formula is x is equal to minus plus or minus then the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a so from the equation we need to identify the value of a is this one the value of b and d the value of c then we can now substitute so value of b is the coefficient of x negative 5 plus or minus so negative 5 squared minus 4 what's our a is 3 our c is negative 7 divided by 2 times 3 so x is equal to negative times negative positive 5 then negative 5 squared is positive 25 so this negative times this negative we get positive 4 times 3 is 4 times 3 is 12 times 7 84 over 2 times 3 is 6 so 84 plus 25 that is 109 over 6 
then let's find the square root so square root of 109 we get 10.44030 okay so over 6 so we need to now split this equation into two equations so one will carry a positive while the other one a negative so it's 5 plus 10 point Four. this will be 10 minus I mean 5 minus 10 point So let's do calculation. So 10.44030651 plus 5. So I'm getting 15.40306516 over 6 divided by. So my final answer is 2.4. Five seven three three eight four four one eight. Now the condition is correct to do decimal places places so we need two numbers after decimal. So our final answer is two point seven five. So for five after seven we have three so we can't get one from that. So let's look at this one. So this one is 5v minus negative 10.44003 so this is negative 5.44030651 over any divided by 6 that is 0 0.906717751 so we need two numbers after this most negative 0 0.91 so after 0 we have a number greater than 5 so we can get a 1 so this is how we can answer a question like this one we move on to question B to in the parallelogram O A B C O A is equal to vector four A O C is equal to six C A B is equal to two third of A C and M is the midpoint of O B C. Okay, so we have these vectors. Then the first one find in terms of A and O C vector A C. So now let's look at the polygon that we have. So this is a parallelogram. So parallelogram this means even this vector, this line is also equal. Even here we have vector 6C. Then uh, CB is equal to OA. So this vector and these are equal. So even here we have vector 4A. Now let's look at the first question. The first question is we are moving from vector A to C. So for us to move from vector A to C, we use A to O, O to B. So that is what we are going to say. So this is A, O plus C, O, C. So A, O, we can say that we are moving against the arrow. So we are going to get negative for A. Then from O to C, it is toward the arrow. So it is vector. 6c then it will begin with a positive 6c minus 4a so this is our, our final answer for the first one then from we want to move from o to p so we we'll use from o to a then a to p since we have an expression from for a a p so we'll say o a plus C A P 
Now from the expression, this expression, we know that AP is equal to 2 over 3 of AC. So let's now, OA is 4A plus 2 over 3 of vector AC. So the vector AC is this vector. So 6C over, I mean, minus 4A. So let's simplify. So 2 over 3 times 6 is 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4. C minus 2 times 4 is 8 over 3 of vector A. So we can now group the like terms. So this is 4A minus 8 over 3 of vector A plus C. C. So let's simplify. I will simplify it here. So we we'll find the lowest common denominator. So over 4 over 1. So lowest common denominator for 1 and 3 is 3. 1 in 3 is 3 times 4, 12. 12a minus 3 into 3, 1 times 8a is just 8a plus 4ac. So 12a minus 8a is 4a over 3 plus 4a. So this is the vector for OP. Now, after we are done finding the vector OP, let's look at the vector OM. So for OM, we are looking at the vector from O through P up to M here. So for, for us to find this vector, OM will move from O to C plus C, C to M. So since we have this vector CB, then M we are told M is the midpoint. So midpoint it means half of this. So what is the vector OC? OC is 6C plus CM is just half of CB. Our CB is 4A. So 6C half of 2 4A is just 2A. So if we write the order, if we write the order, we will begin with 2A plus 6C. C. Okay, now let's look at the question Roman number two hands. So otherwise, show that the points O, P, M are collinear. So for points to be collinear, it means they have to lie on the same uh, straight line. So how can we prove that O, P, and M lie on the same straight line? So don't look at my drawings. Eh? The line should be straight. Now how do we prove using it? Eh? the vector so we need to find we are going to find vector op then we'll find the vector om and pm now if we have the vector op we have it we have it so this is our vector this one is our vector op then a vector om we also have it this is our vector om now the work is let's find the vector pm so for us to move from p to m we use p to o plus c o to c plus e, c to m so po is the opposite or it is the reverse of op so op OP is positive 4 over 3A plus 4C. So <coughs> PO is negative 4 over 3 minus 4C. Plus our OC is 6C. Then CM is half of 4A. It is just 2A. Let's group the like terms. So negative 4 over 3 plus 2a 
over 1 minus 4c plus 6c. So let's find the lowest common denominator is 3, 3 into 3, 1 times 4a is negative 4a plus 1 into 3 is 3 times 2a, we get 6a. Then 4a, this should be c. Negative 4c plus 6c is positive 2c. Then we can simplify here. Negative 4a plus 6a is 2 over 3 vector a plus 2c. Now let's look at how can we now simplify and state how these three points are collinear. So let's look at there is a common thing. Uh, from OP there is this A and C so A plus C is there then from OM there is this A plus C is also there then from PM we can see that A plus C is also there so don't uh, look at the numbers the numbers may just uh, tell us maybe this point is uh, multiplied by this or is times this if we have uh, two lines let's say we have this line and we have another like these two lines they are parallel to each the only difference is maybe we can say if this is a this is 2a so this line is 2 uh, times a or it is twice uh, the line A. So that is what these numbers uh, are representing. So the key point is uh, these three points are collinear since they have uh, one thing is common A plus C, C. So point C. So points O, P, and M are collinear because they have uh, A plus C in common. So you can write that I don't have enough space here. So we now move on to question 3a simplify. 2x plus 14 over 2x squared minus 98. So here we are, let's see if we can factorize the numerator and the denominator. So we can see that the numerator can be factorized. So what is common is 2. 2 into 2x is just x plus 2 into 14 is 7. Let's look at the denominator. 2 is also common. 2 into 2x two squared is just x squared minus 2 into 98 is 49. Now the denominator can still be factorized further. So we use now 2, we use the principle of different of 2 squares. Okay, so okay before we do that let's do this so this is x squared then what number can we multiply by the same number to give us 49 is 7 squared then here we can now factorize by different of two squares so here we have x here x plus minus then uh, 7 7 so we can uh, cancel this so we can see that we have 2 over 2x minus 7 we can also cancel the 2 giving us the final answer is 1 over x minus 7 okay so now we give, we move on to question 3b given that the third and sixth term of a geometric progression are 3 over 4 and 3 over 32 respectively. Find the first term and the common ratio. So let's see if we can have a picture of what is happening. So the first term, we don't have the first term. So this is term number 1, then here term number 2. The third term, we have it, 3 over 4, that is our third term. Then the fourth term we don't have, the fifth term we don't have also. Then we have the sixth term. So our sixth term is 3 over 
uh, form. So uh, we we have two ways in which we can solve for first term and uh, the common ratio. So let's first begin by we are going to form two equations. Eh? So we use the one where we form two equations, eh? then I will show you another way in which we can eh, simplify and find the final answer. So let's look at the formula for uh, GP. So the formula is uh, Tn is equal to AR raised to the power N minus C 1. So where there is the Tn, we substitute with the first 3 over 3 over uh, 4 is equal to AR raised to the power. So this is only third position. So this is 3 minus C 1. So you substitute where there is any, you substitute where the position is. So 3 over 4 is equal to AR, uh, which is our N is 3 minus 1 is 2. So over 1, let's cross multiply. So 3 times 1 is 3. 4 times AR squared is 4AR squared. So this is our equation 1. So we have our equation 1 here. So let's make the second equation. So the same formula. Uh, Tn is equal to Ar n minus 1. So this time we substitute the Tn with 3 over this should be 32. Okay, so this will be 3 over 32 is equal to Ar n. So this 3 over 32 is on position number 6, so 6 minus 1. 3 over 32 is equal to AR, uh, 6 minus 1 is 5. So over 1, we cross multiply. 3 times 1 is 3 is equal to 32. Uh, AR, AR raised to the power 5. So this is our equation 2. So 3 is equal to 32. Uh, AR to the power 5. So let me get rid of this. Okay, so now we can see that we can now equate since here we have 3 is equal to 4AR squared. Also 3 is equal to 32AR raised to the power 5. So what we are saying is 4AR squared is equal to 32AR raised to the power 5. So we can now say 4a uh, 4a r squared is equal to 32 a r raised to the power 5. So now our focus is first we'll begin by by solving for for r common I mean yes common ratio. So let's divide by 4 a r squared also here for a r squared so we can see that this will cancel giving us one then for here is one four into 32 is eight this error this error will cancel then r squared will cancel here we have five errors so two will be cancelled remaining with three so we have eight r raised to the power three then we can divide by eight even here by eight then R raised to the power 3 is equal to 1 over 3. Now we, I mean 1 over 8. We can now find the cube root. Cube root, so R is equal to 1. The cube root of 1 is 1. The cube root of 8 is 2. So this is our common ratio of 0 0.5. So you can find the common ratio like this. Or what we can do is we can also find the common ratio by this so let's say first term second term third term we are given three over four fourth term fifth sixth term we are given three over uh, 32 so the other way you can handle this so let's assume we only have four terms so in our case in our case, we'll consider 
3 over 4 is our first term. So term number 1, term number 2, term number 3, then term number 4. So the other principle, you make sure you just focus on those two terms that you are given. Then that first term, the 3 over 4, instead of being on the third position, we'll consider it to be on the first uh, position. So let's solve. So Tn is equal to a r n minus 1. So now where there is Tn here, we need to substitute with the last uh, term. So which is 3 over 32 is equal to uh, a is our first term in our case. So since we are considering 3 over 4, so we put 3 over 4. Then our common ratio, we don't have any. So we'll, cons we'll consider this to be first term, second, third, and the fourth term. So we only have 4 minus 1. So here we have 3 over 32 is equal to 3 over 4. Our 4 minus 1 is 3. We can now cross multiply. So 32 times 3 is 96 R raised to the power 3. Then 3 times 4, that is 12. Over 96, also over 96. So if we cancel, we'll have R raised to the power 3 is equal to. So 12 divided by 96, I'm getting 0 0.1. Two, five. Then we find the cube root, also the cube root here. So if you go on the calculator, the cube root of 0 0.125 is 0 0.5 or half. So these are the two ways in which you can find the answers. Okay, so now since we, we have the common ratio, so we have the common ratio. We can now proceed by finding the first term. So so since we, we have the common ratio, how can we find the first term and the other terms? So we can use uh, 3 over 4 to find the second term then to find the uh, first term also okay so what we are going to do is instead of multiplying by 0 0.5 will be dividing so whenever you are going back if you are going back you divide by the common ratio so uh, 3 divided by 4 divided by 0 0.5 so here we have 1.5 so here is 1.5 then 1.5 divided by 0 0.5 we have 1 here Okay, so now for us to find the, the fourth term and the fifth term, we can multiply 0 0.5 by 3 over 4. So 3 over 4 times 0 0.5. So here we have 0 0.375. 0 0.375. Seven five times zero point five again, so zero point one eight seven five as our fifth term. Okay, now let's move on to the nth term. So for the nth term, t n is equal to a times r raised to the power n minus one. So if you are looking for the nth term, where there is any, you don't substitute anything. So our A is our first term in our sequence. So our first term in our sequence is 1. Then our common ratio is 0 0.5 or 1 over 2. 
raised to the power n minus c one so don't multiply one times 0 0.5 just leave it like this so that is our nth terms then for roman number three sum to infinity so the formula for sum into infinity when the common ratio is less than one is a over one minus c r so our a is one over one minus zero point five so one minus one minus zero point five is zero point five then is one divided by zero point five will just give us two so this is how we can answer a question like this one okay so now question for a start the flowchart below so according to the flowchart start so we have the start then we enter s comma r comma n is s less than zero if yes print error s must be positive so the condition is the s must be positive if it's negative the error must be printed so meaning no calculations can be made but uh, if the s is greater than zero then we can continue we do the calculation the formula is d is equal to s times r over 100 times any if that is possible we display d then we stop okay so now let's write uh, write a pseudo code corresponding to the flowchart uh, above okay so now the first thing the pseudo code should be written in a english readable language so the first one we need to according to the we start now here you say enter enter s r n now if the flowchart if the language is easy s less than zero under the pseudo code we write if if s is less than zero so if s is less than zero so we'll say we'll begin with if yes so if s less than zero uh, let's begin with if no if no calculate t is equal to s times the r over 100 times the n then display then display d or else else so else we are saying if we say no if I mean if we say yes or else stop okay so now we move on to question for B a box contains identical cards and on each card the letter of the English alphabet is printed a card is selected at random from the box and not replaced and a second card is then selected find the probability that the two cards selected Roman and one have vowels printed so what are we going to do first let's look at uh, what are we talking about let's look at the alphabetical letters so we have a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x y z so we these are the the outcomes that we have so the we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five uh 
26 so we have 26 letters we have 26 letters so we have 26 letters okay so now out of this we need to indicate the letters that uh, indicates the the vowels so the vowels we have a we have e we have i o even u so from there we can see that we have five letters represents the vowels then the remaining letters are consonants so the consonants are letters like b c d f g h j k l m n e p q r s t v w x y z so the remaining so from 26 if we subtract 5 so 21 these are consonants then five we are told these are vowels so there are only two chances there is a chance of picking a vowel and a chance of picking uh, a consonant so we only have two outcomes now even if we are not taught to draw the tree diagram we are going to draw the tree diagram this will help us to find the, the correct answer so the our tree diagram will have two outcomes so we have the consonant and the vowel so this is our first pick so the first card then since we we are told two were selected so we are going to have another second pick So have consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel. So the possible outcome here we going to have consonant, consonant, here consonant, vowel, here vowel consonant, here uh, vowel, vowel. Okay. Now let's look at uh, how many. Let's look at. Uh, the way we, we should now indicate so the first part of the tree diagram we are going to just get the way they are total uh, the required the event over the total so how many uh, consonants is 21 over 26 the total vowels 5 over 26 now here a card is selected at random from box and not replaced so whenever we are told not replace we need to subtract you know. so the first one we are going to assume that the the letter that was uh, picked without replacement was a consonant so if it was not replaced so we can see that the total will reduce so from the 21 we are going to have 20 over 25 so even the total should be reduced by one then for the vowels since we assumed that the first the letter that was picked was uh, a consonant the vowel will just remain the same so the vowel 5 over 25 now we don't know the letter that was, uh, was picked so the first one we assumed it was a consonant now let's assume it was a vowel so if it was a vowel picked it is now 4 over 25 then the consonant is 21 over 25 so this is what you do so if you can see the pattern is the first part we've affected this the other one should just come the way it is the second part you affected the other one so that's a procedure and in this case we are only dealing with two outcomes so let's look at the first one have vowels printed have vowels printed so we are looking at where we have vowels only so we say 
to a bit of vowels. So this will be vowels times the vowels. So the first to a bit for the vowel is 5 over 26 times the 4 over 25. So 5 times the 4 is 20. Then 26 times 25 is 650. So we can now reduce. So our final answer is 2 over 65. Then for the second part, Roman number 2, one has a vowel and the other a consonant. So this is our area of interest. So say for a bit of one vowel and one consonant. So this will be CV plus VC. So the C, 21 over 26. Our V is 5 over 25. Then E plus our V is 5 over 25, mean 26, times Z. The V is, the C is 21 over, 21 over 25. So 21 times 5, 105. 105 over 650 plus C another 21 times 5 is 105 also over 650 so no need to find the lowest common denominator since we already have so 105 plus 105 is 210 over 650 we can cancel so our final answer is 21 over uh, 65 okay so now we move on to the last question for this video 6a evaluate so we are finding the definite integral since we have been given the, the limit okay so let's first begin by integrating so whenever you are integrating integrating is the reverse of differentiation so the, you add x to the constant, so 2 becomes 2x plus c, this is 2x to the power 1, so you add 1 plus 1, whatever you do to the power on the numerator, you also do to the denominator, so over 1 plus 1, then plus c, 6x squared, so you add 1 plus 1, over 2 plus c, 1, evaluating from negative 1 to 4 so let's see how we can uh, simplify so this is 2x plus uh, 2 over 1 plus 1 is 2x squared plus uh, 6 over 2 plus uh, 1 is 3 this the power x evaluating from negative 1 to the power 4 I mean to 4 so let's simplify 2x plus uh, we can cancel we have x squared plus 3 there is 1, 3 into 6 is 2, x to the power 3, evaluating from negative 1 up to 4. Then since we are done integrating, so we are going to now form two uh, pairs of this, but we are going to have a minus in between. So 2x plus x squared plus 2x raised to the power 3, evaluating with 4, minus so you get the first one should carry the the, the, the biggest number of the two uh, limits then the other one we will have 2x plus x squared plus 2x raised to the power 3 evaluating with negative 1 so 2 where there is x we put now 4 plus 4 squared 2 4 cubed minus 2 negative 1 
plus negative 1 squared plus 2 negative 1 cubed okay so 2 times 4 is 8 plus c 4 squared is 16 then uh, 4 times 4 is 16 16 times 16 times 3 is 48 48 times 2 48 times 2 that is 96 so I mean 6, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times so this should be 64 then 64 64 times 2 128 so this should be 128 minus 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 negative 1 squared is positive 1 then negative 1 squared negative 1 raised to the power 3 is negative 1 times 2 that is negative 2 so let's do the addition so 8 plus 16 plus 108 so the first part is giving me 152 minus so here we are going to get negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 which is negative 3 so 152 negative times negative positive 3 is equal to 155 units squared so remember whenever you are finding the definite integral you are looking for the area for this question find the equation of the normal to the curve y is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4 at the point 2 comma negative 6 so uh, this is the point of contact so we have the point of contact 2 comma negative 6 now the curve uh, tangent and the normal they share the coordinates for the point of contact the only difference is the the, the gradient of the normal with that of a tangent or of a curve is related perpendicularly so what do you do let's look at the formula so the formula for the equation of the normal is y minus y1 gradient of and bracket x minus c x1 so the normal is just a straight line so if we have this is a curve then we have a tangent this is our tangent then the normal is this line which is perpendicular to this so they meet at an angle of 90 degrees so we we have the x1 we have it the y1 we have it so the y1 we have it so the only remaining is we need to find the the gradient so our first step is it we are going to find the gradient of the curve so let's find the gradient of the curve so we need to find the first derivative of this equation so it's dy over dx we're going to use the power rule we move to the front giving us 2x 2 minus c 1 then we move this one to the front so this is 1x 1 minus 1 the derivative of a constant is 0 so dy over dx is equal to 2 times x we have 2x raised to the power 1 minus 3 1 minus 1 is x to the power 0 dy over dx is equal to 2x minus 3 x raised to the power 0 is 1 according to the indices so we have 2x minus 3 times 1 is just 3 now where there is dy over dx we substitute with m for gradient so 2x minus 3 so from the point of contact we are going to get the x coordinate to find the actual gradient so we have 2 minus 3 so 2 times 2 is 4 minus 3 so our final answer is 1 so the gradient of the curve is 1 the gradient of the tangent is also 1 so remember the gradient of the curve is equal to the gradient of 
the, the tangent. Now for us to find the gradient of the normal, we just say gradient 1 times gradient 2 is equal to 1. So gradient 1 is 1 times this is equal to, this should be negative 1. So 1 times m2 is just m2 is equal to negative 1. So the pattern here is if the if you are if the gradient of uh, the curve or tangent is one, then the gradient of the normal should be negative one. But if it, if it were it was two, three, four, then the gradient of the normal should be a fraction one over that number. You also interchange the negative uh, the sign. So y minus y one is negative six. Gradient negative one x minus c x one is two. So we can now expand. We have positive negative times negative positive six negative one times x negative x negative one times negative two positive two. So we collect the like term. So y is equal to negative x plus two minus six. Y is equal to negative x minus c four. So this is how you can find the, the actual answer for a question like this. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.